hi there and welcome to uh, November's Night Sky Guide. The nights are starting to draw in, in the Northern Hemisphere, giving us not only longer, but also noticeably darker skies. And the great winter constellations are beginning to appear in the east at sunset. But let's start this month with the planets. Now, unusually, I'm going to begin with a planet that is only visible through optics. But you can see it through a decent pair of binoculars at the moment, and that's Uranus. Uranus is well placed for viewing in the night sky in the northern hemisphere throughout November and December, easily seen through binoculars. The tricky aspect of identifying it, because it basically looks like a bright star, currently comes from its location in southern Aries, where there aren't many stars to identify it. However, one way to locate is to find Menkar, which is Alpha Ceti, and Sheraton, which is Beta Aretis. And Uranus lies about 60% along that line, starting at Menkar. So just follow that track from Menkar to Sheraton, and you may well see that slightly bluey object, which is Uranus. Venus is still in the morning sky, rising about half five uh, universal time. And it's located in the constellation of Virgo, southeast. It's getting closer to the sun in the morning sky, but despite that, it is still rising about three and a half hours before sunrise, about magnitude minus 3.9. Mars is there in the evening sky, and although it is moving away from opposition now, it is still very bright, about minus 2.1 magnitude to about minus 1.1 by the end of the month. And on the 16th of November, it ends its retrograde motion and begins to move from the west backwards towards the east. Jupiter, best to, best to see it um, in the early evening sky still, still quite low in the constellation of Sagittarius. It's visible all month, but only just to the west of south as darkness falls, about minus two magnitude and appearing closer and closer to Saturn as both planets begin to converge Saturn again, similar to Jupiter, um, west of south, a magnitude of plus 0 0.9. And as I say, they will both conjoin, um, they'll be visible side by side in the sky uh, next month. But um, on the 19th, they will form a triangle with the crescent moon. And if you are using binoculars to look at the nighttime sky, you can already see both Jupiter and Saturn in the same field of view. Constellations-wise, Taurus is entering the sky, nice and high, is starting to rise properly in the eastern sky at sunset with the bright star of Aldebaran marking the southern eye of the bull, and above it the Hyades cluster, which represents the sort of the the point of the bull's face, and above that uh, we have the Pleiades, which looks like a well, like a mini plough, uh, seven stars. To the naked eye, the Pleiades often looks like a fuzzy patch of cotton wool. A few of the summer constellations are still available in the west in the early evening. We have Cygnus, we have Lyre the Harp, Aquila the Eagle, forming the summer triangle. Uh, Delphinius the Dolphin, along with a few others, are slowly setting now in the western sky. And high in the south is the prime autumn constellation of Pegasus the Winged Horse, with Andromeda the Princess behind it. And if it's dark enough, where you are, you may see the Andromeda galaxy. In the north, the Big Dipper is low in the sky uh, and partially below the horizon in some southern uh, northern hemisphere locations. And the Little Dipper, otherwise known as Ursa Minor, is hanging by its handle high in the northern sky. And of course, the tip of the handle is Polaris, the pole star. Cassiopeia, the queen of Egypt, uh, looking like a, a W, is sideways in the northern sky showing us stuff. The W outlines the throne on which she sits. And as I say, you can't help but notice the bright stars that are starting to appear as the month progresses in the eastern sky, as the beginnings of Orion the Hunter rises along with Taurus and the Pleiades. And by mid-month, um, by sort of 9, 10 o'clock in the evening, Orion is fully in the sky. Two meteor showers this month, the Northern Torrid Shower, which actually runs from the middle of October to the middle of December, reaches the peak of about 15 meteors an hour on Thursday, November the 12th. But they're not a bright shower. The Leonids, which is derived from material left by uh, Comet 55P Temple Tuttle, uh, runs from the 5th of November to the 3rd of December and generally is a bit brighter. 
um, and the peak will be around Tuesday the 17th, around about 11 o'clock in the evening. And you can get up to 20 meteors an hour. Again, it's nothing like the Persids, but it's not a bad meteor shower. And there is a possible comet in the sky. You may need a pair of binoculars, but comet P1 Neowise um, is visible in the northern hemisphere pre-dawn in the morning sky um, in early November. You can find it between Venus, which of course is dazzlingly bright, and Arcturus, which you can find if you're struggling to find the, the, the yellow-orange star of Arcturus by following the curve or the arc of the handle of the plough or the Big Dipper, and it points at Arcturus. And between that, uh, you can find Comet P1 Neowise. It's not the same Neowise comet that was around in the summer. That was a different one. Um, so, that's all for this month. I hope you enjoy looking at the skies. I hope you get to see some meteors and possibly even get up early in the morning and see the comet. But we are beginning to get the great constellations of winter, and this is the classic time for early evening uh, stargazing. And once bonfire night is out of the way, which traditionally we get rain, certainly in Britain, running up to bonfire night, the skies tend to clear, it starts to get colder, the seeing gets better, and uh, it's a great time to see the stars from now through to sort of the end of January, early February. So look forward to talking to you next month when the winter stars are really up in the skies. And uh, take care for now. Stay safe. Speak to you next time. Bye-bye.